What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through week 13, this and early look NFL slate. Um, kind of some fun, some fun ones. I actually like this slate better than I've liked the previous slates, and maybe that'll hopefully help my wallet as well because it wasn't it wasn't a great week last week for me. But uh, I, I like this slate. I think there's some interesting things to do, and there's some some games I think are you know you really want to focus on mostly in the afternoon. So I might uh, I might be quicker about some of the games in the early part of the day because I am all over the afternoon slate this week. That's yeah, my and, and we'll and we'll get to those. Uh, but you have these 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 complete competing interests between you know good plays versus tough matchups and stuff like that. Like what trumps what, and exactly. uh, and we'll, we'll we'll be getting to that. Um, mm-hmm. And there's one like kind of super fun narrative we're gonna get to in a little bit. Um, but uh, I guess we'll just start off. Let me let me start my. Uh, I shouldn't say fun narrative. It's actually kind of gross, but we'll pull this up anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right. So Pittsburgh against Atlanta. I will say this: that when I first built my um, my just show me the salaries or whatever it is, um, I don't know. I for whatever reason kind of like this game. Um, yeah, this is before I saw projections, I looked <laughs> past the one o'clock games. I guess. Um, a big thing is what's going to happen with Najee Harris in this game. Um, he got taken out of the Monday night game and we saw a lot of activity from both Benny Snell and also McFarland. So, uh, if he is out, you're, you're dealing with either uh, Warren was out in that game. So either Warren 5k Snell at 4,700, you know, um, and McFarland, he got, got work at 4k. So we have to kind of look at that. Um, so that's something to look for, but I, I like the passing game here. I, I, I like Pickett. I, I like uh, Deontay Johnson. Pickens is totally showing out. Um, and and Fryermuth as, as a tight end. I really do like the Pittsburgh passing game here. It's and and we listen, we talk about this, uh, you know, as we get towards the end of the season. The difference between playing in shitty weather and playing in domes is 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 the discrepancy is wider as you yep. get later in the season. So it's tough to ignore this. I mean, listen, it's a it's a, it's a small total. I don't want to play the over if you want to know the truth, but but forget that. I I First of all, I think Pittsburgh's better than Atlanta at this point, um, and I think that Pittsburgh, I think Absolutely. Pittsburgh does a does a nice job, and I think that 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 Pickett's improving every week. He found his targets in in, in Johnson and and uh, and Pickens and and Fryermuth too, and I think he goes back to all of them. So you play those guys, and and what would it be without a without an Atlanta run back for our old favorite Cordell Patterson? You know, so that would be a. Uh, that would be right off the bat uh, a way to like get different uh, at one o'clock and then root, you know, root for root for lane closures in the <laughs> afternoon games. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I actually do like this game a little bit as, as kind of a low owned, uh, a low owned attempt. Yeah. Here's my issue with this game. It's the same issue every week. Look, Atlanta doesn't give a damn about anything. They just want to run the ball as much as possible. It's so crazy how much this team just tries to run the ball <laughs> every time. And it slows the game down and it makes it a little bit less interesting for me. But um, so I, I wouldn't do the Patterson thing just because he's not even like getting the bulk of the work anymore. He is, he does have some extra upside, obviously the all time kickoff return leader. And he, he, you know, he's got some a little bit of receiving upside, which he, they used him on a few, few big plays in the last game. Uh, I think if I had to pick anybody in this game from the Atlanta side, it would be London. Um, I, I do think that just the talent level for him and you hope Pittsburgh gets a lead and maybe they have to throw coming back. I can't quite get to pick it right now, but I think as, as a val as value goes, he's probably a reasonable value and, um, still has not put up a fantasy game we would accept yet. And no, not really even no, close. No. Um, so, but, I, but like you said, if Najee plays, I, I like Najee. I'm a little nervous though, that they're going to be careful with anybody at this moment, at this point. Um, so Pickens, Pickens, Deontay Johnson, everybody looks good point per dollar. Um, we haven't really seen a big game out of any of them with the things currently organized the way that they are. Uh, Friar Muth actually probably has been, yeah, he's fine. Everybody's fine here, but I don't have as much of a priority, but it definitely considering all those guys, I want to see what happens with Najee. And if we'll have to play either Jalen Warren or Benny Snell, um, I don't think we have to either way, but I think that they're definitely interesting values if, uh, if Najee's out. All right. What do you got next? Is Denver Baltimore? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I got nothing here. Sheets. <laughs> yeah. So the running back situation this week is pretty is pretty bizarre. Um, you have the same names that are showing up every week, 
and the matchups are getting a little fishy. Um, so I, I was trying to think of what running backs I kind of wanted to, to look at. And I didn't really get to too much as far as like stacking or anything like that. Like none of these, none of these guys look like obviously a good stacking situation, but call me stupid. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind going back to Latavius Murray again. I mean, he, 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 he had 13 for 92 in his last, in, last game. Um, forget the target. I don't expect him to get much, but when you compare like all the running backs to each other and, and the matchups, they are, I think that the, all the running backs have, have issues. Um, and if, if, you know, Latavius Murray, he was, he was chalk, but he wasn't that bad last week. I don't know. I think at 5,300, I, I think I might want to take a shot again. I, I'm really like feeling like millionaire maker kind of vibes this week. So, so that's kind of what I'm, what I'm looking at. Uh, aside from that, I don't really have much of this. Game. Yeah, I understand it. I, I don't really know how well they're going to be able to run the ball against Baltimore. They haven't, you know, they're the lowest scoring team in football. Yep. Um, are they lower than the Rams now? Oh yeah. Okay. They're 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 they're, they're like all time kind of. Terrible. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, if all the receivers were out again, I would take a shot on Kendall Hinton at thirty six hundred. Um, nine targets last week. I, I played him. He was like two percent owned, and one of the you know he he didn't get there quite. He had a couple end zone targets that he didn't call in, but uh, wouldn't mind taking a shot of that only if Judy and Hamler were out again. Um. But I, I'm not very interested in this game in anything. I think the only play that I actually like is Mark Andrews. And you could always play Lamar, but it just feels weird to do it in a – against, you know, maybe one of the best defenses in football, um, which is weird to say for a team as bad as Denver, but they really are good. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty much off of it. I guess maybe I'll – as always, I'll probably throw in one stack of Lamar with Andrews just because I always do and look for a run back, maybe Lat Murray. I'm just not that excited about any of it, to be honest with you. Speaking of not being excited about too much, I mean, actually, hold on a minute. So, so I'm not at first look. I'm not getting to anything here. Oh, we Fields is out. Okay, I was yeah. wondering why Nathan Peterman was getting a. Uh, well, a we don't know that Fields is out yet, right? I think it's. Oh, I don't know. That's, I'm currently getting Peterman is projected. I don't know if. Well, if yeah. Fields is in, I mean, I'll take a shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like oh. uh, Fields in, I'll take. I'll take. I'll take a shot. Um, uh, if he's out. I'm kind of off of this game, but you know, you're supposed to, aren't you supposed to play Montgomery? Um, he's not projecting all that great, but he's not projecting all that bad either. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I feel as though he should be a decent player. Though. So I'm going to put Montgomery kind of on my list of, again, it's kind of fringy plays in what I tell you, what I think is kind of a fishy running back. Week. Um, so uh, that's pretty much all I have from this game. Yeah, I actually think this is a game I, I may end up stacking by the end of the week. But there it is, okay. Um, I because I, I think that if, if you get Fields in there, I, I will go back to the Fields, and now, now you have no Mooney, which is going to make a bunch of three K receivers questionably okay. Why not go for the guy they traded and play Chase Claypool? Um, if if, 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 if Fields is in, and you 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 run hit, you could you, you could run a really cheap stack with with uh, Fields to commit and Claypool. The problem is he runs so much, it's hard to use two receivers with him. But Komet and Claypool, if the if there's uh, if we have fields, I actually like them each individually, separate from just having fields. Um, I don't think Green Bay's defense is anything that is all all that great. Uh, Montgomery, if fields whether fields plays or not, is kind of okay. So I, I have this as all interesting. And then on the other side, I have no problem with running Aaron Jones out at sixty nine hundred against the Chicago defense. I don't think is very good. And I have no problem t uh, playing Alan Lazard or Christian Watson on the other side. So I think this is an interesting game stack. That's a secondary stack for me right now, but it's sort of like the Lamar thing. I, I just want to have fields every time he's out there, even though, look, they may limit him all these things. They may make him throw the ball more because they don't want him to injure his body anymore. He's, you know, you're going to keep, you, you don't want to waste this guy on a season that you're not going to do anything, but you also want him to keep getting the, the reps in while he's been one of the better quarterbacks in football for the second half of the season. So I, I'm, I'm interested in this as a potential sneaky game stack, but it's certainly not a priority at the moment. Okay. So what do you got next? Th this to me, I mean, looks like the, yep. uh, looks like kind of the nuts, right? I mean, it's, it's uh Jacksonville, Detroit, 51 total close spread, you know, in Detroit, like everything, everything you kind of want. And then you got Jacksonville, you know, skill players. I mean, you got Etienne who's, they said he's going to play, which is good for him. Good for us. Um, you got, 
Zay Jones and Christian Kirk that get basically double digit targets every week. Um, I think that Lawrence with any or all three of those, you know, in some combination certainly makes a lot of sense to me. And then um, Ron St. Brown from Detroit on the other side. Um, I think this is, you know, your very logical 1 p.m. You know what I mean? Like game, you know what I mean? Like a, of all the 1 p.m. games, I think this this really does stand out. And um, yeah, that's about yeah, it. Totally in agreement with you on everything. Uh, this is this is the game that I think that of the first early part of the slate that is interesting. I think the guys you're looking at here are St. Brown. Um, these teams are like, it's funny because they're both, they're, they're, these are two losing teams that can feel decent about their future. I feel like, you know what I mean? They've had that kind of a season and I think they're going to keep playing it out. So that's, that's good for us. Uh, Jamal Williams. I have no problem with him either. Uh, so I, I have Williams or St. Brown as actually being a priority on their own. And I think this is a, a good game stack on top of it. Uh, you know, we finally got the big, the big Lawrence game that everybody's been waiting for forever last week. Um, probably, probably helped him that, that, that Travis Etienne got hurt, to be honest with you, in terms of his fantasy production. But I, I'll go back to Etienne too at, at, at 6,400. So, and if he's out, I don't mind Jermichael Hasty. He looked really good uh, when, when, when Etienne was, was in. I do think they'll try to play Etienne for what it's worth. And uh, I like this game. I like, I like every which way. And games, as we know, in Detroit, uh, they tend to go a little nuts. So, this would be the definitely the, the priority of the of the of the 1 p.m. slate. Um, and uh, as far as individuals, the priorities are ATN, uh, Williams and St. Brown all, are all super interesting to me. So uh, definitely a, a good game stack here that should have some ownership. But um, I think it's one that you want to get some exposure to either way. All, all right. right. So so this next game, I think, I mean, I'm not getting into politics or anything. I think this game is disgusting. But in any case, you have you have Deshaun Watson uh, coming back, um, starting in Houston, you know, and and on the one hand, you have ooh, Deshaun Watson goes back to Houston. And then the other hand, you have like basically the entire city of Houston like want, that wants him to die. You know what I mean? Like um, uh, not to mention probably hundreds of thousands of protesters outside the stadium. Um, God knows what. Um, I'm not taking a share of Cleveland. I'm not taking a share of any of that. Um, I will probably take a shot on Damian Pierce uh, on the Houston side and maybe uh, maybe the Houston defense. Um, not that I'm biased or rooting against the guy, but that's kind of what I want to do. Um, and I don't really have much else about this. Game. Uh, I, I like I like Chubb. Um, OK, I think this could be an explosive one. You have arguably the worst run yep. defense in football um it'll be interesting to see what they do with 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 watson uh if he even gets all the starting quarterback minutes like i i really th i don't know that that's even guaranteed i think so but it is really weird that they would play him going back to houston in his first game at, you know in a season they've been, they've been talking about it since the suspension you know what i, mean? I know like i know i know but I mean, that's why you're looking at, I mean, I'm looking at the projections. You still have, you still have Brissett and, and Watson is hitting, you know, I know. And, I'm, and I'm telling you that's, I don't think that's totally impossible. What it no. does do is I think it makes the Cleveland receivers more interesting. Like I think that both Cooper and people's Jones are, are maybe a little bit more in play for me, even though they've been fine with Brissett. I think you could, you could really see it, you know, Watson taking some deep shots. Uh, I would like to get to, to more on the Houston side. Um, Pierce would be probably the only one who really makes it for me, but I, I think that you're playing, like, I, I really think you should, people should go out of their way to, to overspend for Chubb or spend down for Hunt, because I expect one of those guys to have a big game here um, and probably Chubb. Listen, here's the thing about Pierce. I mean, like he's, he has, he's a lot of talent, you know, and he's on a, just a crappy team. And if, if you just get him in a game, you know what I mean? He's going to have a good game. You know, he hasn't really been in a game. I mean, he's got they have they've, they got blown out of Miami before he even started. Basically, he was the Washington game that 23 to 10 was basically an illusion. That game was over, you know what I mean, for a long time. Yep. And so, again, as once again, on a, on a, on a slate filled with kind of weird running back plays, which we're going to get to some more of those. I think it's, you know, listen, if they keep this game close enough, let's we'll talk about the correlation stuff again. It's going to probably be because he had a good game anyway, you know. Um, so I kind I kind of I kind of like Pierce over here, and uh, that's it. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna just reiterate that I think that Chubb is a really interesting spend up because of I agree with that. running back. I agree with that. All right, um, what do you got next, Sheets? Uh, yeah, Jets at Minnesota. Um, despite the fact 
that the Jets have played, you know, pretty good defense the whole season and that 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 safety or that uh, defensive back is obviously really good. Uh, I think Minnesota can have some success here. I mean, they, they, they again, it's another dome. I don't, they play in a dome, right? It, it, it's, yeah. uh, um, you know, Cousins, Jefferson, I have Hawkinson. Uh, is What's his name, Out? Is that why I'm not getting to him? Do you want? No, I guess not. But I'm getting more Jefferson and uh, and Hawkinson. Um, I think they could definitely have success. Also, I think, again, D- Dalvin Cook, I'm not quite getting to him. I haven't really gotten him the whole season. Then the other side, I mean, listen, terrible take sheets from last week about how bad Mike White was. You know, I was telling him that he's like the worst. I don't know what the Jets are doing. Like, like, uh, like benching uh, Zach Wilson as Mike White is just the stone worst and you shouldn't play Garrett Wilson as chalk. Really good job, Sheets. Um, so uh, so basically Mike White broke the slate, <laughs> sort of, uh, as did Garrett Wilson. Um, so I, I don't know if I'll go back to it, but certainly, certainly can make the case for it. I mean, go right back to Garrett Wilson. I'm getting a projection out of Michael Carter this week. Um, we'll see if he and plays. And again, just put him in a in a in a right, and put him in a put him in the list of these running backs that you're like, yeah, really, you know. So uh, I like that. I guess Garrett Wilson's the man, and uh, it's about all I have for now. Yeah, this, I love the Jets' defense, by the way. First of all, yeah, uh, you like the, you like going against Cousins. You know, yeah. Well, look, yeah. man, that was one of my one of my good Thanksgiving Day takes is that the the, yeah. the Cowboys' defense at five percent ownership was just just. Right tormented this guy yeah. um this is the similar type of this line is really good the jets defense is really good um and i think that they're they're a good play i'm very uh, i'll tell you on sunday what i'm doing with the jets running backs because i don't know what's going to happen with that situation but you could have potentially some value there uh if you believe carter's going to get all the work which i don't know um I, the, the the main plays in this game for me are, are garrett wilson and one of jefferson or thielen that, that's the way i would would break it down um i think garrett wilson is a is a really really good receiver i actually like all of the receivers for the jets in general and i think that at, with white at quarterback I, the, you know this is not going to look like a project these none of these guys are going to project for for great games here but i think you're going to see the ball spread around a little bit more um elijah moore fringy but like a long shot large field play um that, 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 that's pretty much it for me. But I do think Wilson should be a priority at this point. Um, and then you run it back with Thielen or Jefferson on the other side. But I don't I don't particularly want to play the quarterbacks here. Um, if I did pick one of them, I'd probably pick Mike White, <laughs> which is weird to say out loud. He, by the way, he was on a millionaire maker winner. <laughs> that was my big, by the way, that was my sweat that I had in FanDuel last, uh, last week. That oh, was, was Mike White? A, it was a Mike White lineup. Oh, yeah. you had some of that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm jealous. That's, that was, uh, he must, was he like a half a percent owned? Yep. All right. Well, let's move on to the next one. Um, well, that's part of, by the way, part of the fun of using Saber Sim is that's what it'll do for you. Like if, if Garrett Wilson shows up as kind of a play, they'll just kind of give you Mike White. You know what right. I mean? Like, right. Because they, they, they really love stacking. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yep. Um, especially on the weeks where no quarterbacks really get, have huge yeah, games, exactly. you know. Um, all right. Next, what do you got next? Sheets. It uh, looks like yeah, the, 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 the rise and fall of the of, of the of the of the New York Giants. They were six and two going to the Super Bowl. And now they're they're home dogs to the Redskins. I mean, to the to the, to the Commanders. Yeah. Um, you have a total of like two. Um, you have. Uh, I don't know. Is Barkley that bad a play? Uh, he certainly projects like an awful play. Um, at eighty two hundred, only eighteen or so fantasy points. Um, Obviously, that doesn't look very appealing, but I don't know. Uh, again, tough, tough week for running backs, as far as I'm concerned. So I, I'm, I'm not throwing him out. Uh, aside from that, I'm not really getting too much. You could always, I guess, play, you know, Gibson. I suppose on the other side of this, the running backs. I just think this could be just overall a pretty low scoring game, and I'm probably don't want much part of it. I mean, Terry McLaurin always in play, but I don't know. I, you have to think there will be receivers that score better. Than him. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, this is a, a tricky one. Cause I, there's a part of me that wants to like, I watched some of the Washington game last week to, just because it like, I don't know why it was on so much. I just think red zone kept going over to it and it wasn't like a ton of scoring, but I, I will probably have to play some Brian Robinson. He's really talented. He is cheap. 
And I don't think, I think, I mean, it's pretty like he's getting the work on the, on the ground. He doesn't have a whole lot of pass catching upside, but what did he ran? He ran for 18 for one Oh five last week. He did have a receiving touchdown too. He put up 23 fantasy points. 5,300 is, is reasonable. So I don't mind Robinson. I actually can't believe I'm saying him ahead of Gibson. And then I like you, I like, I like McLaurin is probably the most talented receiver under six K I guess, but do we love the matchup and Heineke throwing him the ball? I think McLaurin or William or Robinson are pretty much all I have in this one. And I think if you wanted to play Barkley at low ownership, I certainly am not going to argue with it. It's just not showing up for me. All right. Uh, got only got a few more 10, 10 a.m. games or 1, 1 p.m. games. One uh, more. Tennessee, Philly, one more. And 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 this this is the one that, that – well, I'll say this is the game that wins, but this is this is the play that wins. I mean, this is – this is we got narrative city. It's whatever it is. It's – last week, Philly won – it's what 70, there was like 73 point total, like Aaron Jones and Aaron and Dylan did well. Two weeks before that, they, they gave up a billion rushing yards to Brian Robinson, right? And and to and, and to Antonio Gibson. It is this game will be played on the second of December. And Derek Henry is going to run for 200 yards. I mean, this is ridiculous, right? I mean, the one thing that Philly does is is give up tons of rushing yards and and Philly plays, listen, they've been playing really fast. That means, you know what that means? That means more, Tennessee's going to get the ball more often. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, and again, on a slate with weird running plays, uh, game script, whatever. Let's talk about game script after Henry rushes, you know, goes in for 80 on the first drive of the game, you know, and, th- and then, then, then let's, we'll talk about game script. I think that, I think Derek Henry's got to be the best running back play on the slate. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. And, uh, uh, on the Philly side, hey, well, well, welcome to the league, Miles Sanders, huh? 140, you know what I mean? Like they really just rode him like really, yep. really well. Yep. And uh they look they look really good offensively. Uh I haven't had any luck playing any offensive players against Tennessee. We tried the last week in Cincinnati with very limited li- limited success, I think. Um and uh Listen, I think Philly's going to probably show up as an okay play, you know, with Hertz and Smith and, and even Sanders or whatever. But they're 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 really balanced in general. I don't know. I, I, for me, I'm probably going to just play Derrick Henry and lose. That that'll be my that'll be my take. I like Derrick Henry as well. Um, on a week where we're where we're kind of unsure about running backs, if you're able to, if we get value enough at receiver, and you're able to spend up for like a Chubb and Henry. I think that you could you could you could be looking at like seventy fantasy points between yeah, those right. kind of slate where that happens. Yeah, um, and then also the the chub points also. Don't forget yeah. the hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so Philly is uh I mean, look, they're always in play. I don't know how they're yeah. not. Um yeah. but I, I'm having trouble getting to a specific play. I guess the best one on the Philly side, Devontae Smith. Um, I just, just really like the guy in general. I think he's an awesome receiver. They, they force feed AJ Brown a lot, but Devonte Smith is, 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 you know, he can, he can home run hit and you can, you can throw the ball. He on, uh, on Tennessee. Uh, I'm just, I, it's weird. I feel like I was, I thought I was going to have a little more interest here than I do. As of right now, I've got Henry. I don't mind Sanders, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Cause I really like the, I like playing Traylon Burks. I love this kid. I think he's really talented. Um, we're starting to see him break out a little bit. Helps that he recovered, he re- recovered uh, Derek, Derek Henry's fumble in the end zone. He had a rushing touchdown without rushing um, last week. So he helped me a little bit with that, but, uh, but if they're going to have to throw the ball coming back, I think Traylon Burks at 4,600 is certainly reasonable. Um, love Robert Woods in real life. Don't love him for fantasy. Uh, and Westbrook Akine is like, you know, six targets last week, uh, eight targets, a couple, couple weeks back and had 32 fantasy points in that game. And he's cheap enough to where, yeah, maybe, maybe you can force in a little bit of long shot value in, in the million maker or something like that. Um, but mostly I, I thought I'd have more interest. And right now it's, it's oddly Henry and, uh, Burks as, as the main ones for me. So man, let's get to the lab, the, the four o'clock games. So I, I, have, I have a take. On, on this on this next game, I I, I my I have one, maybe two plays in this game. Um, Miami San Francisco. I don't know where ownership is. I, I'm seeing like this 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 game being owned or whatever it is. I want to advise you. So first of all, you have Jeff Wilson and and where he he most are both going back to San Francisco, right? Yeah. Um, um, and they have Rasheed Mostert as playing. 
um, or ready to go. I don't know what that means uh, as far as the split share, whatever. And you have uh, Tyreek Hill and, and Jalen Waddle. Obviously, they're projecting well and two are projecting well. I, don't, I, I really don't want to do it. I mean, look, my, Miami has had – listen, I'm not going to throw shade on Miami. These guys have, like, good talent. They've had just nothing but cupcake matchups, like, the last, like, five, six weeks, okay? And, and, and the last time they played any team that had a decent defense was against Pittsburgh, and they were on a hands and knees to move the ball at all, right? So I'm not saying that, they're, that they don't have great talent or whatever it is, but – you're you're gonna have to convince me to go that the team anybody's going into San Francisco and putting up a zillion points. I'm just not interested. Um, it's good. Hey, listen, if, if they, they all come back and get me, they, they all come back and get me. The, the, what I do have interest in is the Miami defense in this game <laughs> against 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 Garoppolo. That that, that Miami defense a perfect defense for Garoppolo to throw pick sixes and and all kinds of stuff. So I do like that and. Weirdly, I don't even know what the what the price is on San Francisco. I wouldn't mind the San Francisco defense a little bit either. That that's my. I think this game is slow, not slow. I just don't think it scores as much as. Listen, the total is only forty six. You know, it's not like it's 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 that big. But I don't. I'm just not interested in, in screwing with San Francisco's defense right now from the other side of the ball. This is one of those running. Back, listen, if Jeff Wilson, if 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 Moster wasn't playing, Jeff Wilson would be huge chalk again. And and I'd fade that too. You know, I, I just don't I just don't want to play offensive pieces against really good defenses. I know that's like goes contrary to like modern DFS theory or whatever it is, but I just I think I'd rather do something else. So that that's where that's where I'm at at least right now. I'm sure when I run my sabers and stuff, it's gonna say, dude, how come you're not up to forty percent hill? I'll end up with twenty five percent of them again. But as of right now, I I just prefer to not do it. Yeah, I'm I'm con- I'm I'm thinking about this one. Um, I have this. This is my. I had it written with a question mark uh, as, on my sheet today because I don't know what I want to do. It does. I th- I agree that it's a good defense in San Francisco. I, I've been saying since they were whatever. I've been telling all my friends they're probably making the Super Bowl this year. No problem. Like you know, it, it feels offensive to Miami to have them with a twenty-one and a half total. I don't buy that. I don't, I just don't think that that's their, that's their average here. I'm shocked that that's what it is. I would have thought this game you have like somewhere in the 28 to 25 kind of a thing or 26 or something just feels like too low of a total for the Miami side of it. Um, They, uh, other than the, the one that, that weird pit game, they kind of do whatever they want. And I know you could say it's the matchups and everything. I guess Buffalo slowed him down a little bit, but. I don't know. I feel like the right thing every week is to get exposure to Miami. And and maybe this is the week where you, you don't want that exposure. Um, the guys who I actually have as my top play here is my get weird play is Trent Sherfield. Um, he and it sounds really weird to take the third Miami receiver, but if you're going to take, take the, the point of view of they're going to be able to shut down your primary passing options, a team that runs a ton of wide three wide receiver sets. Why wouldn't we play Sherfield at 3,300? Um, at least a little bit. I'm looking for value at, at receiver. Uh, you also have Jawan Jennings, who had a big game the other day, and he's 3,200. Just just throwing him out there. If you want to do the double spend up at running back, this is the guys who 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 at the moment you're looking at. But it's not exciting. It's just guys who I I have a little bit of interest in. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. But probably more like more likely than anything, I don't do much with this game. I think that the best play may end up being George Kittle at 5K or Debo Samuel at 6-6. Um, but it feels, I don't know, just I, 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 this is one I could see being either heavily on by the end of the week or having not one play from. I, I really think it's right now I'm more on the not not one play from, but I'm trying to find a way just because I think it's the right thing to do with Miami. And you have so many weapons on the San Francisco side. One of McCaffrey, Samuel, even Ayuk, Jennings at the cheap side of it, Kittle, like I just feel like there's a lot of talent for one of these guys can always put up 30 fantasy points or, you know, especially the Samuel, uh, Kittle combination so those are interesting to me but I think I'm probably uh as of right now off of it I feel wrong I feel wrong about it though I I, I don't know if something about it I have to bad. see I really want to see where ownership comes in on this you yeah. know uh I, I, you know, I haven't seen any content yet this week so uh, we'll see yeah. we'll see how that goes and again I'm going to Florida Friday so with any luck I'll, I'll miss all the other content <laughs> I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just play who I like um so all right here we go we got the rematch right KC at Cincinnati yeah, start it um, off, buddy. Yeah, so I guess the first thing it says, so Joe Mixon is trending towards playing. 
Um, I think Jamar Chase is trending towards playing. Yeah. So we have all of these, all of these dudes. So the first thing I will say is I will do the exact same recommendation as I had with Kansas City Buffalo. I, I recommend that you bet under in the first half in this game. Um, that I, I I feel as though both teams just kind of like you know just 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 play it a little slow. Uh, this is just the way these games usually usually end up going. Now that doesn't mean that it's going to stay that way you know, like, uh, uh, into the second half. I mean, you got you got all the Cincinnati guys back. I mean that's that 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 that's a lot of points available. Um, Kansas City, you know, you got Kelsey, Schuster, MVS had a good, you know, he he was better. They For called a touchdown reason, back on him. What's that? They called a touchdown back on him on a big play. That would have been nice. Yeah, yeah. And then I got uh, I don't I'm not a big Schuster guy. Um, so for me, I mean, look, it's a 52 and a half point total, you know, some really good talent. You certainly want to get some of this. I, I probably take both sides. I play Mahomes with Kelsey and, and, and somebody Then I would play Burrow with, with, with Chase and somebody play some mix in also, you know, it's, I, I, this is, this is just as good of a game. Well, it's, it's just as good of the game as, as the Jacksonville, uh, Detroit game. And this will definitely be a better football game. Um, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, kind of hard to get away from all this talent on this, in this game. Yeah. It's, it, and it's also really hard to prioritize any player as being that much better than the other. <laughs> um, yeah. that's, that's the problem that, that you have with it. Right. Right. Like, yeah. and they're expensive. Um, so, I mean, they're expensive on the Cincinnati side. So it's, it is kind of a tricky one. It was the first natural stack that I built. Um, I actually don't think the ownership because of the, the thing, I mean, it's gonna depend on what happens with chase, but both Chase and sure. Higgins are and throw Boyd in the mix. Like I, I, I'm, I'll have exposure every which way to this game, just because I think it is the best game game environment. Um, MVS, Sky Moore, Justin Watson on the cheap end, all of all are moderately interesting. If Tony is out, if Tony is in, I might just play Tony here. Um, and the, I think the best play I have right now, which is never a good sign for a game that you want to stack is I, is Pacheco. I think he's like the, like, he's 5,700. He's getting all of the rushing work and they're going to, they're going to balance it out. The problem is he gets none of the pass. The passing work goes to McKinnon. So, uh, but I, but Pacheco is a 5,700 guy. I can certainly get on board with. And why is he projecting so awful? I, I think it's like overdone. I really do. I know that they controlled the game last week. So he got more touches and, didn't exactly explode against a good Rams defense, but I could see him having a game here and I will have some, ex some exposure to Mixon as well, but this is just a stack them up every which way possible. And it's, it's a great game environment. And we're about to talk about one other great game environment. And in, in just a minute, um, I think we skipped over Seattle, right? We did. Yeah. So we'll go back to that one in a minute, but, uh, but yeah, this is, this is a game that I definitely want exposure to every which way. And right now I don't think because of the pricing, that the quarterbacks can be too high owned. Um, so that has me even more interested in this one. Yeah. Let's go back to Seattle Rams. And this is, um, this is another problem. I'm, I'm really having a problem with this. Um, and you can either talk me into it or off it or whatever it is. Yeah. Maybe I'm just old. Maybe I'm, I'm already like jaded and old school or whatever, but let's just call it. So Seattle projects to be the, one of the better offenses to target. Um, you know, Gino to, to Metcalf to Lockett, Kenneth Walker Jr. projects to be one of the best running back plays on the slate, if not the best running back play on the slate. And yet I still think the Rams have a good defense. You know what I mean? So, so I have this, I have this, I don't know, don't they? I mean, like, look, I mean, look, the, the Chiefs, the Chiefs only beat them by what, 10? And it's because the, the Rams literally can't do anything offensively. So even if the defense gives up 30, you can still have a good defense that gives up 30 points. Because they just are on the field all the time. I suppose so. Um, you know, I guess that makes sense. But um, uh, of course, in the corner of the projections, what I just said, Seattle's probably the second best stack on the slate. Kenneth Walker Jr. may be the best running back overall on the slate. So I guess the point that you made makes some sense uh, that Rams can't do anything like that. Although I will say the UVA guy did a very, very nice job last week. Um, oh, Bert Perkins? Yes, he yeah. did very, very well. Um, uh, and unfortunately for you, he might be the future there. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how that, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but he did a very, he did a very, very nice job as, as a matter of fact, I wonder what his price is. 
Is he's he forty nine hundred. He's forty nine hundred. But like, what is the difference between that and like the five hundred difference you're getting like with Mike White or three hundred dollar difference with with uh, what's his name uh, Pickett, who you mentioned already? Three hundred. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, guess that's the, I guess that's the answer yeah and hey they got a better game script right i don't know um yeah maybe not but um boy oh boy if i'm losing these one o'clock imagine playing him in like a late slate when you got burrow mahomes like herbert yeah. and, and, and tua you got all these guys but no problem i'm gonna play whatever his name is i'm gonna play bryce perkins no problem yeah, but you know what you do is I think if you play him, I think you either play him with Higby or you don't, or you play him with nobody. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, he's just going to run. The, he's going to try to run the ball. That's the, that's that's his his upside. Um, you know, had forty four yards rushing last week. Uh, certainly has room for for doing even better on that. Uh, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to get to the Rams. I like your idea of playing Perkins. Maybe you play Perkins in the afternoon and like a, like by himself, and oh. then you stack up all the expensive guys in the Chiefs. Yeah, may, yeah, maybe, maybe that might be the way to do it. Um, I like Kenneth Walker a ton. I just think he's, he's just really, really talented. I know he didn't, hasn't had a, a, a huge game in a couple of weeks, but I do have him as a, as a strong play. And I, the way I've got it listed right now is just one of Walker, Metcalf and Lockett probably make a good portion of my lineups, but I don't think that I'm going to make this a full on stack where I'm playing multiple of these guys in the same lineup. I just think there's too many other plays on the slate and I don't know how much they're going to have to throw the ball. And like you said, this is not a bad Rams defense. Um, right so whatever maybe maybe at the end of the year it's falling apart a little bit but uh i do think one of one of the walker metcalf locket group i think my favorite would probably be walker but metcalf is right behind him right metcalf how about 15 targets last week that's pretty wild um, yeah usually you're going to get a lot more than 20 fantasy points when he gets 15 targets and that's all you ended up with last week but um but yeah i can definitely get on board with the uh with some of the seattle stuff and then maybe perkins in the afternoon slate um Maybe Tyler Higby, but I, I think this is, I think I'm reaching a little bit because this next game we're going to talk about is another just gold mine. Yeah. So why don't you start with that one? Okay. So favorite plays here. Um, I like Eckler. I like, I like, it's not chasing if Josh Jacobs just keeps doing it every week. <laughs> so, okay. Like Eckler um, and Jacobs are, I guess, where you start. And then you have Keenan Allen. And then you have, uh, on the on the on the other side, I am interested in uh in kind of all the receivers to be honest. Adams, Hollins, um, I think that they're both very you know very viable if you can afford them. And if Mike Williams is out, Keenan Allen of course looks like a better play. I also would include Josh Palmer if, if Keenan Allen's out. And I think this is a really good game to stack. So this is probably the uh, it's probably like right there with uh, the Jacksonville Detroit for me, just behind the chiefs and Bengals. Um, but everybody here is in play on, on both sides. And my favorites are the running backs to start off with. Um, and again, it, it's just, it feels more and more like a, it feels very weird, but I feel like maybe this might be a spend up week at running back. And uh, if Devonte Adams gets overlooked, I, he could, he could just go nuts um, in this matchup. And uh, at the same time, Foster Moreau is in play at tight end. Gerald Everett is in play at tight end. They're just, I just like everything from this game. So it's hard for me to even prioritize right now, um, especially without knowing whether Mike Williams plays or not, but I, I like everything. Yep. Uh, I'll go right back to Josh Jacobs. Um, uh, if he plays, obviously, um, you know, it's his, it's his backfield, man. I mean, like, he was, it was the biggest game of the season, right? For a running back that he put up last week. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's kind of a shame that, not a shame, but like he walked off the 80 yards. It, it, it almost seems like, oh, outlier game because the he had already like fully smashed. Yeah, he had, he had 229 yards rushing. Yeah, he I also mean, had six right. catches. Like, he was points. everywhere in this game. Yeah. You know, and and um, he is probably – him and Eckler are the two running backs I feel the most comfortable in. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I want Henry. Um, yeah. Uh, I like all those. So I'm kind of hoping that I – that I find some good receivers to allow me to pay up for these guys. Um, uh, Cause I really don't, I mean, what, what are the good running back plays? Like the cheap ones. I don't even know what they are. Um, so, right. I mean, I, I literally don't know. So, so, <laughs> like the best point pro projection is Kenneth Walker and he's seven K. Right. You know what I mean, and then against, Aaron, against Aaron Donald, right. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Like, um, yeah, it's all fishy. 
So I don't know. Uh, th- this game is obviously, you know, there's this one, the Kansas City game, and 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 the Jacksonville game are the are are the I want to say obvious, but these they, those are the good plays. Those are the good games yeah. and stuff. And then for me, I just got to see how we flew right it flowed right into the, the summary. Um, for, and for me, I'll, I'll take a shot again just for just for funsies with the um, with the with the Pittsburgh game. Um, and uh, those are those are my stacks. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm at. I've got my stacks as uh, Vegas, LAC, Cincinnati, KC, Jacksonville, Detroit. And then I'm deciding what I want to do with the Bears, Packers, and Miami and San Francisco. Um, favorite individual, some individual plays, Eckler and Jacobs, Hunt, uh, uh, Chubb, or, uh, or, and uh, Derrick Henry, which again, all spend-ups, but I think they're actually really good this week. Uh, St. Brown, uh, Travis Etienne, Garrett Wilson, one of Thielen or Jefferson, Henry or Traylon Burks, uh, Pacheco. Those are my priority guys, but uh, really – Gonna, I don't have the Cincinnati KC guys individually put in there, but they're they're that whole stack is is definitely going to be what I'm very very high, high highly exposed to this week. Yeah. Um, and I think that's about it. So that's our first look. I'll have, I'll be back later in the week. Uh, I'm going to try to get uh, at least with Rody, and I think we'll have one. Uh, Goldie's going to be doing his own his own breakdown. So uh, should be fun. Um, good luck to everybody this week, and uh, let's make some money. Sounds good. <laughs>